Floss Tube. Happy Friday. It's March 16th today. My name is Christine. My channel is Calico and I know you're here to watch me make a vinyl project bag but I have to talk about a few things first because you know I always have to talk about something. Uh, I want to preface this by saying first of all that I wear a GoPro <laughs> when I do this. So if you have any kind of qualms about it's not really that bad of a video. It's not that shaky of a video, but I just want to put that out there because I know myself, I'm very susceptible to moving video. You know, sometimes I'll watch something and if somebody scrolls too fast, I will literally have to take Dramamine sometimes because I'll be car sick for an hour. So I edited this to really cut out most of the, most of the shakiness of it. Um, but I was just kind of experimenting my son has a GoPro and he has a, a mount that you can put on your head. Well, that was probably going to be way too much. So he's like, well, mom, I have one you can hook to your chest. So I thought that maybe that'll be a little bit less movement. So I gave it a try. I also, that also brings up the point that this was really never meant to be released. This was supposed to be just kind of a video for my eyes only. So when I did it, I wasn't really, when I was filming it, I wasn't really thinking about, you know, how much I was moving. Um, the reason I did it for myself was because I had made some changes and I wanted to remember if I go six months or a year before I make a project bag, I thought, gee, I need to go ahead and remember what settings my sewing machine was at, what stitch length I used, kind of the, you know, the way that I did it. So I was making this as a video for myself. So that's kind of where it came to be. Well, that leads into actually another thing. This video, my, my this vinyl bag is not my idea. This is actually 99% Dina from Making Life Count. This is her tutorial. So... Um, she actually, when I was going to release this, I asked her if it would be okay, if she would mind if I did that. And she said, no, that she wouldn't mind. And she, so I do have her permission to do this. If you want an easier tutorial and one that's probably a lot less steps, as a matter of fact, I know it is less steps. Go watch Dina from Making Life Count, Count with the original tutorial. The difference is, is that I put an extra one inch strip of fabric above my zipper and she doesn't. She just wraps hers over. So this, my video has a little bit more steps. I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. I basically thought, gee, after I filmed this, somebody might want to see, you know, if you're like me, I like to watch people do things. Without further ado, here's me making a, a let's call this an extreme project bag because I wear a GoPro. Okay, we'll get started. So I pre-cut all of my fabric and um, stuff, so I'm just going to put here what measurements to use, and I'll also link those below, but you want to get your outer fabric, and then you cut your lining fabric, then you cut your vinyl, and then I cut four strips, which is, this was different from Dina because she cuts two strips. And then I lay my lining on top of my fusible interfacing and trim it down to the same size, or you can pre-cut it. Then you want to bring that over to your ironing board and fuse the fusible interfacing basically to the wrong side or the back side of your lining fabric. So. That's pretty self-explanatory there. I just use, um, I just found one that was not too heavy of a loft, sort of a thin, thin loft. Okay, then you get your, your strips that were cut two inches by about 13 and a half. I always cut my, mine a little bit longer. And so what you see me doing there is folding a half inch into the center of the strip and ironing it. And then I like to use, if you don't have one of these grid lines on your ironing board, you know, you don't really, you don't, it's not necessary, but I like to use that to fold the other half of the strip to make sure that my final strip ends up being an inch wide. So it's kind of nice to just follow along those grid lines, but you know, it's not necessary. You basically just fold a half inch from both sides and you end up with a one inch strip. Now I do that four times, so I speed it up here. You don't have to. I found this very relaxing, ironing these strips for some reason. It was just, I don't know. It looks tedious, but I just, it was one of those things where I just kind of found it relaxing. I don't like to iron clothes. I never iron clothes, but when it comes to ironing fabric, I don't know. I find it kind of relaxing. So 
And for my particular bag, you want to do that four times. Probably in hindsight, now I would use some best press because as you can see, that iron, it definitely does a job, but it's not, when the iron, when the fabric hasn't been pre-washed and it still has all its sizing in it, it is hard to get a crease in it. So I think if I were to do that again, I'd spritz it with some water or some best press just to give those a nice crisp feel. Then you get your zipper. 14 inch will work, but I like to get a little bit longer. Actually, I bought all of the 14 inch zippers at Walmart, so I had to resort to some larger sizes. But as you can see how these come, they have a staple in them and they're folded. So I'm definitely gonna try to order some from zippershippers.com. And then I bring mine and give it a quick press just to get rid of the wrinkles in it. Now this is a, one of those vinyl zippers or nylon or whatever, the ones that you can sew over. I don't know if I would try using a metal zipper. I mean, obviously you can. I wouldn't because I'd probably destroy, break a needle and destroy my sewing machine with it. So, okay, now you see me laying them out because what you want to do is you want to, my, my zipper pull is over to the left. I don't think I point that out, but my zipper pull is over to the left over there and you might see my phone over on the side because in order to see what the GoPro was seeing, I needed to use an app to show me what, to make sure that I was in focus. So you'll see that every once in a while over to the side there. Um, so you basically just want to lay these strips because you want to make sure nothing's upside down or right side up. And then I go over to my sewing machine. I replace my regular foot with a zipper foot. So I'm sort of showing myself there that that's what you need, obviously, when you're going to be sewing these strips to a zipper. And I should have pinned these, but I am not a pinner. I will do anything to avoid pinning something. So I take probably a little bit more time doing this because I sort of line things up at the sewing machine and kind of hold as I go. So that's why you see me just kind of fiddling with it there. And I think you'll show me, I mean, I show you here, um, like I said, I was doing this for me, where it says length L, that's saying my stitch length is at 3.0. I don't know how your sewing machine works, but I don't use a real tiny stitch for this. And I think I just did that because I was having to rip out so many of them that <laughs> it was easier to do a little bit longer of a stitch length. So it's not quite a basting stitch, but it's longer. I don't know, 3.0 seemed to work for me. Um, but you can play around, obviously. You don't have to use my settings on your sewing machine. So you go down one side of the zipper. What's nice about these zippers, these nylon ones, that you know you can just kind of cut off the excess. So just make sure that you're sewing your strips. You know, you don't have to actually start right at the edge. And, and it's kind of nice to avoid the little zipper head, you know, as much as possible because you can just trim everything down afterwards, all the extra. So yes, this is a bit excessive having this long of a zipper, but like I said, at the time I bought all the 14 inch zippers at Walmart. And sorry, this gets, oh, this gets a little shaky here. Sorry about that. But as you can see, you wanna make sure your fabric strips, if it's a directional fabric, that they're going the right way, you know, cause you, you wanna try not to end up with some upside down patterns, you know. Mm. It's gonna be inevitable when I wrap the back around the front, that's gonna end up being upside down. Uh, but you can see I just went across and now I'm gonna go down the other side. And you can go, you can have as much or as little of the zipper showing, it's just personal preference. I just like to have a little of it showing there. Go down the other side and you'll notice when you get down to the end, you're gonna run into the zipper pull, which can get in the way, so yeah how you deal with that okay so you're getting close to the zipper pull you lift the presser foot up push it out of the way now this part I don't know if it's necessary but I like to just sort of sew those the end together just to kind of keep the zipper I don't know where it needs to be. I don't know if that part's necessary. You're gonna end up cutting that part off anyway, but I just like to do another little extra sew across the two right there just to kind of hold those two ends together. 
Now, as you can see how it's rippled like that, I I don't know. I just, you know, like I said, maybe some, what somebody said about them coming folded, you know, but I just decided for myself, I would just take it over to the iron and just press it into submission. Now, it works for something like this because I'm not gonna wash this, but I think if you were then gonna end up washing this, <laughs> if this were an item of clothing, it would probably, you know, be rippled again. Okay, so moving on. Now I'm gonna get my piece of vinyl. I'm laying it on top of the lining because what I wanna make sure when I tuck that vinyl and before I sew that piece of vinyl, I wanna make sure that it's going to um, not, it's gonna line up with the lining fabric below it. You know, I just found that that worked out better. Otherwise, sometimes you see where I'm pointing right there. You know, it's the, I have a little extra on this on the right side over there. So I wanna kinda move it over so that when I sew it, I know it's going to cover all of my lining fabric. That's why I like to cut my lining a little bit larger. I cut my outer fabric larger than it needs to be, my line, my vinyl larger than it needs to be, the strips a little larger just because I like to square it all up at the end. So um, my measurements are a little bit larger than, Z than Dina's just because I like to be able to cut stuff down. So taking it over to the sewing machine. Now this is where it can get kind of tricky. So what the tip I learned from the Crafty Gemini is to take a piece of tissue paper. Now I use the tissue paper that comes with the vinyl because when you buy vinyl on a roll it comes with a bunch of tissue paper so I just cut some strips of that and you'll see because what will happen is that vinyl where it goes over your sewing machine it sticks to it so you put a little piece of tissue paper under there and it allows that to slide now Michelle farm girl gave me a tip to you can also put some painters tape on your sewing machine I didn't feel like going out to the garage and digging around for that, so I just decided to go ahead and use the tissue paper that I had on hand. But either would work. You know, you just kind of have to make your sewing machine slippery or or that vinyl is just going to want to stick to it. So I keep the zipper foot on for this part just because, you know, it's then the zipper foot doesn't have to go over the vinyl. You can certainly switch to your other presser foot. But I just, for this part, kept it, kept the stitch length the same at 3.0, and I also kept the zipper foot on. So you get that sewed on and bring it over, set it on top of the lining fabric. I line up, I line it up, up the top and all edges. So you'll see that the zipper and the strips and everything are, are a little bit bigger, but you line it up to make sure everything's going to look good, that the vinyl is covering all the way down. And then I take these Wonder Clips, which were, are absolutely wonderful. I'm so glad I picked up a pack of them. They keep things so much nicer than pinning. And I only pin when I absolutely have to. And I find that this part, it's pretty necessary to pin. You might not even need to do this basting part, but I did find it's easier. So I'm going to be sewing on top of the vinyl. So what you, what you see me doing here is getting more tissue paper strips. If you have a presser foot that's Teflon, Apparently that slides right over the vinyl. I don't, so I find that using putting just a piece of this tissue paper both sides helps. Now here's another difference with my uh, my tutorial and Dina's. She I think does a basting stitch all the way around her bag at this point, and I've decided that I just need to do it down the two sides. So you see me over at my sewing machine again. I take the zipper foot off, put my regular presser foot back on again. And I'll show you that my stitch length there is a basting stitch, so I go all the way up to 4.5, a nice big long stitch. It just doesn't really need to be, you know, this is all going to be covered with the, the binding at the end. So this is basically just to hold everything in place. So a nice large stitch, I go down that whole side, and you'll see my presser foot just glides right over that tissue paper and doesn't stick to the vinyl. So it was really a nice tip. Go down one side, do a flip, come back up the other side. I try to go real close to the edge here. So not even a quarter of an inch, more like an eighth of an inch. I just try to get real close to the edge. Now there's a very important part coming up here. So I even pause. 
when you get to this last part of this zipper, where you're getting ready to go over to the zipper, you need to stop and you need to move the zipper pull into the bag. It's very important because if you sew over that part and end up cutting that off, you will not have a way to open your bag. So please stop and make sure that you move your zipper foot into the bag. Then you can go ahead and do your final seam across the zipper to hold everything in place. Take it back over to the cutting table. Take your wonder clips off now that everything's stable and you'll see how easy this tissue paper just rips off because you sort of perforated it with your stitch seam. And I just try to keep it nice and straight so I could use it on the next bag. It's all ready to go. Oop, gets a little shaky there, sorry guys. But that comes off real easy. Then you get your rotary cutter and you'll see me change rotary cutters right here because I remembered that I have a rotary cutter that I use when I cut over my zippers because it ends up kind of damaging your blade a little bit. So I have my zipper cutter, my zipper cutting um, rotary blade right there. But yeah, it easily just cuts that zipper right off. I cut off the extra vinyl, the extra everything that's hanging over the edge. You just line everything up to, the, to that lining. Sorry, it gets a little shaky here too, guys. Yeah, those nylon zippers, they just cut right off. They're just really nice. Yeah, my blade is a little dull and you'll see. Make sure you close the, the blades, so you don't cut yourself. Then you get your outer fabric or your back. This is gonna be the back of your bag. Make sure if it's directional that it's going the right way up because in my copy bag I made, that part ended up being upside down. So now you'll see that right here, my outer fabric is already trimmed to an inch down. Now, I don't know why I think I cut that wrong. I, the measurements I give gives you extra so that you can actually, it's not so close of a cut right here. Um, it ends up where you actually will have to trim down each side to get it exactly an inch. But I think that when I made this bag, I, I don't know, my original measurements ended up being, I'm, it's just lucky that I ended up having an inch all the way around. But what you do at this point, so I'm showing you, is that you will have excess fabric if you follow the measurements I give. And you're going to trim everything down to one inch. So just, and, and the more accurate you are here, the easier the next step will be. Because you're basically going to do almost like a quilt binding, you know, where you wrap the, like if this were a quilt and you were wrapping the backing around. So you want to make sure it's pretty accurately one inch on all the sides. I need some new blades, guys. Apparently that blade isn't good either. Okay, bring it over with your wonder clips over to your pressing board, or your ironing board. You're basically just going to fold over a half an inch so that the edge butts right up to the edge of the bag and you're gonna press it. And just iron straight along there. So it's pretty easy, you know, because it's one inch, so you're gonna fold it basically halfway so that the edge is, is reaching right up there. Okay, then I find that all you need to do is put one wonder clip or a pin right there in the center, turn it around. Now, when you do this side where the vinyl is, you have to be real careful with your iron that you don't touch the vinyl with your iron or it will melt. And I find that I could get right up close to it and I would be fine, but yes, you don't wanna, you, you don't wanna get too close to that or it will just melt. So once again, fold it in one inch. Now this is how you miter a corner. You take that fold on that side and then you basically Take your corner, fold in a little triangle there. I like to do a little finger pressing right there to get that nice, that crease. And then you're gonna fold that seam in. And then when you fold this over, you have a nice mitered corner. And I find that all you need to do right there is put one wonder clip to hold it. Because if your bag is all squared up and you've got this cut one inch, 
everything will lay really nicely and you shouldn't have any problems with it at all. My first 10 bags didn't work out so nicely, but by the time I, I was on my 11th or so bag, I started kind of wising up to the fact that everything really kind of needs to be squared up in order to make this part go smoothly. And you want to do that on all four corners. I think I do one at regular speed here and then I speed it up a little bit there just to kind of show you that not all the corners fold quite as easily. I think I have a little, I have to kind of fiddle with this one a little bit more. So if it's not laying well, you know, you just kind of have to unfold it, kind of, you know, take that crease, you know, move it a little bit, just fiddle with it but it should for the most part line up as a nice mitered corner there. Those of you that know how to quilt, this will look familiar to you. I'm sure you've probably done your binding like this at some point in time. Bring it over to the sewing machine. I change my stitch length to this one to a shorter stitch length. So I take that basting stitch of 4.5 and I personally go down to about 2.8. Doesn't have to be that, it's just what worked for me um, because you want that stitch to be a little bit tighter. That's kind of the one that's holding, you know, that goes all around the whole bag and holds it together. So you could even go smaller if it you know, with that if you want, a tighter stitch, 2.2, whatever. Um, and here I want to do a little bit of a back stitch just to lock it, lock that in place. I just start somewhere kind of close to one of the edges. And you're going to go just real close to the edge, you know, uh, like a top stitch. I don't really show how close I am, but you know, you want to be pretty close to the edge. And then you just sew around the whole bag. And if everything was squared up, it usually goes pretty smoothly at this point with no puckers or no, uh, your mitered edges usually, mine, like I said, after some practice, they all sort of fell together pretty nicely. Just make sure your needle is poked down into the fabric when you turn your corners. Take the wonder clips off as you go. We're approaching the last side, so as you get down to where you started, you want to do another little couple of back stitches just to lock everything in place. And there we have it. Front, the back, and um, make sure the zipper works. Open it up. And this is how nicely it finishes it off on the inside there because you put a strip on the top and the bottom and everything was folded over so it has a really nice 
you know, no raw edges on the inside. Everything is nice and tucked away. And the smitered corners. You can see kind of my top stitching there about how close you want to get. But that's about it, guys. Pretty fun. Lots of fun fabrics to do. So there you go. Thanks for watching.